The city of Rochester was not at all what I expected it to be. This is a city I only knew of from the Commander Tom Morning Show, where I'd get my Saturday morning cartoon fix. But after spending a weekend in Rochester with my family, I was hooked. Not only does the city ooze heritage, have stunning nature, progressive attitudes, and incredible food, Rochester also has an entire museum dedicated to fun. We spent three full days exploring the city, and I'm here to report back to you the best things to do in Rochester for amazing family fun that combines a little bit of culture, some education, and a lot of adventure. To say that this city took us by surprise is an understatement. By the end of our weekend in Rochester, we had fallen for the city and we were anxious to come back again. Rochester is a city of a little over 200,000 people in upstate New York. It sits a little over an hour from Niagara Falls, and about the same distance from the magical Watkins Glen in the Finger Lakes region. The city is just 40 minutes from one of our favorite New York State Parks, the incredible Letchworth State Park. This park boasts a stunning gorge, amazing hiking trails, a series of incredible waterfalls, and you can even join whitewater rafting adventures with Adventure Calls Outfitters. If you're like us and you find yourself with some time to spend in Rochester, here are a few things to do that you shouldn't miss. Our first stop in Rochester was the towering High Falls. Dropping over a massive 96 foot cliff on the Genesee River, High Falls in Rochester, New York is a must stop for any visit to the city. High Falls is situated among the remains of historic mills, forges, and factories in the High Falls district that date back to the 19th century. Throughout the district, you'll find educational placards that explain the various buildings along the riverside. We had amazing weather, so we made our way over to the shores of Lake Ontario and Ontario Beach Park. This scenic area is one of the most popular places to visit in Rochester, New York. The soft, sandy shores of Lake Ontario back onto a lush, shady park that covers over 39 acres of waterfront. We timed our visit to lunchtime, and Ontario Beach Park was the perfect place to enjoy another Rochester classic, a white hot. These unique hot dogs are made from pork, veal, and beef and are almost exclusively found in Western New York. We stopped at the local hotspot, Bill Gray's, to try one for ourselves. To work off our meal, we took a stroll along the waterfront at the park and came across the, another Rochester original. Abbott's Frozen Custard is the birthplace of this famous frozen treat so we made sure to enjoy one for ourselves. Just a short walk from Ontario Beach Park is the oldest lighthouse on the US side of Lake Ontario. Charlotte Genesee Lighthouse was built in 1822. This historical site was extensively restored back in 2014 and towers up 40 feet in height over Lake Ontario waters. Now I don't talk about this much, but I'm a huge music fan. And one of the coolest ways I've found to bond with my kids is through jam sessions at home. Big D plays the drums and C plays guitar. Rochester is a huge musical city. And when we found out that it's also home to the world's largest guitar store, we had to make a visit. House of Guitars is a legendary musical shop that's as much a museum as it is an instrument and record store. 
We navigated the maze of rooms, lopsided stairs, and vintage gear, and could barely tear ourselves away. We also made a stop at Record Archive, a full-fledged music destination disguised as a record store. Behind the stacks and stacks of vinyl was a full bar and performance space where guests can shop for memorabilia, enjoy live tunes, and wash it all down with a cold bevy. One thing I love about Rochester is the incredible history and importance to the country's human rights history. And one part of that important history is the Susan B. Anthony House and Museum. Susan B. Anthony was the driver behind the women's equal rights movement. It was her drive and persistence that led to women getting the vote, even if she didn't live to see that day. Susan B. Anthony was also a good friend to black rights activist Frederick Douglass. You can visit a statue commemorating their friendship near the museum, or head to Highland Park to find the very first statue in the U.S. commemorating a black man. It's none other than Frederick Douglass, who chose to be buried right here in Rochester. After a long day of exploring, we stopped for a quick refresher at the Strathallen Hotel. The Strathallen is very central and convenient. It features towery ceilings and marble floors. You'll also find an arboretum, an indoor swimming pool, and a modern fitness center. The hotel also owns Seven on Strath, which offers additional units in a historic mansion across the street. We had one more stop to make before our first day in Rochester was done though. And that was to a restaurant we had been dying to visit for years, Dinosaur Barbecue. Everyone I know who had visited Rochester before me said the same thing. If you only eat at one place in Rochester, eat at Dinosaur Barbecue. This famous Rochester barbecue joint is located on the promenade along the Genesee River and we were not disappointed. Dinosaur Barbecue in Rochester was opened in 1998 and is actually the second location of the brand. This restaurant offers slow cooked, fall off the bone meat paired with backyard favorites like beans, mac and cheese, and mashed potatoes. The servings are huge and it is some of the best barbecue I have ever eaten. The next morning we woke up early because the kids were way too excited about what we had in store for them. We were making our third visit to the Strong Museum of Play, Rochester's premier attraction focused entirely on fun. Sprawled across a massive 150,000 square feet are engaging interactive exhibits completely focused on the art of play. You'll find the history, technology, and creativity behind some of the world's best games, toys, comics, and entertainment technology. Almost everything here is designed to be played with, and there's even a multi-story climbing adventure called Sky Climb that's perfect for those with an adventurous spirit. Another great family-friendly thing to do in Rochester was a visit to the Genesee County Museum Village about 20 minutes from downtown. The village is set up just like a 19th century upstate New York town, complete with a general store, churches, a blacksmith, tin maker, cobbler, potter, and even an on-site brewery. It's like taking a journey 200 years into the past and experiencing New York State like it was before highways and planes were a thing. When I first took my boys axe throwing in Peterborough, Ontario, I remember looking around at the awesome environment with a great bar and a fun, clean, modern entertainment vibe and saying, why hasn't anyone done this with bowling alleys? Well, 
Someone must have been listening to me because Radio Social is exactly what I was imagining when I said that. This bowling alley, restaurant, and entertainment facility combines amazing food, a fun, modern atmosphere, and a great bar and social environment. It's a far cry from the typical dark, dingy bowleramas that I grew up with, and it's a place that, in my opinion, makes one of the best places to visit in Rochester. Located in a reclaimed 42,000 square foot former radio factory, hence the name, Radio Social offers 32 bowling lanes, modern lounge areas, indoor and outdoor entertainment, and even outdoor fire pits. It's a place where you can spend every night of the week and have a different experience. Yet it also seems small and welcoming and genuinely enjoyable. Do not visit Radio Social without trying the food. This is, and I'm shocked to say this about a bowling alley, one of the best restaurants in Rochester. Whether you order from their casual menu with tender and juicy burgers and soft dough pizzas, or from their Mediterranean menu with Cornish hen and lamb arancini, the food at Radio Social is a delight. My hat is off to Chef Steve Eakins. I would make the journey back just to eat here again. The next morning was the start of our final day in Rochester, and we had a few more places to visit in mind before we made our drive back to Ontario. Our first stop was to fuel up at Rochester Public Market. If you're in town on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, this makes for an excellent way to get the pulse of the city. The market welcomes vendors of all sorts in covered tents and makes for a fun shopping experience and a great way to taste local eats. Nothing works off great food like a little science. So the next stop on our list of things to do in Rochester was the Museum and Science Center. The museum itself is fabulous and offered us a range of interactive and engaging displays that explore from the Ice Age all the way up to the arrival of Europeans and the displacement of indigenous people in upstate New York. The museum even explores modern sciences, such as light waves, sound waves, and even modern construction. But the true gem of the Rochester Science Museum is the RMSC Strassenburg Planetarium. If you have a fascination with astronomy or outer space, this incredible theater will have you traveling among the stars. The Rochester Planetarium ignites its domed theater with a range of entertaining shows and programs that are both family friendly and fascinating. After the show, we made our way to nearby Schoen Place to enjoy a Mediterranean meal at Aladdin's Natural Eatery, a wonderful waterside stop on the banks of the Erie Canal. To enjoy the sunshine, we made a quick walk through town to Towpath Bikes where we rented some colorful cruisers to enjoy some cycling along the historic canal. The views were fantastic, and there was even a rowing regatta taking place to add a little thrill to our weekend. Did you know that Rochester is home to the oldest mini golf course in the United States? We had no idea either. So when we found out about Whispering Pines Miniature Golf at Parkside Diner in nearby Seabreeze, we had to check it out. Whispering Pines opened up in 1930 and is so iconic that it's been listed on the National Register of Historic Places. We had an absolutely incredible time during our weekend in Rochester. The city blew away our expectations and showed us that there were more things to do in Rochester than we had ever imagined. It's a fun, family-friendly city with an incredible range of attractions and restaurants that blew our minds. If you're looking for what to do in Rochester, New York, you'll have your hands full. And that's a good problem to have. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons to help support our content. It really helps, and we appreciate each and every one of you who does. We'll see you next time on Wandering Waggers. Adventure Family Travel.